Chapter 2 The very next night, Heaven's bullwhip snapped across the Texas sky. The power of each bolt of lightning illuminates the black of night. They dance wildly and randomly across every horizon. Positioned by the wind, sheets of rain pound the earth below. The battle rages on with every thunderous roar between dark and light. It shakes both land and sky to confirm the fight continues everywhere. The beams of the headlights shined the painted broken lines that whizzed by on the winding, little-traveled farm-to-market road. Wait a minute, had they changed from white to yellow? Did he see double? Either way, they seemed to be a blur now. The heavy rain made it hard to tell, but at least two colored lines were stretching ahead. Without glancing away, Salvatore Sal Cortez reached toward the cup holder for his drink but missed it, knocking his cigarette's cherry ember onto the back of his hand. Ouch! He jerked and inadvertently yanked the Corvette's steering wheel. The sports car veered across the double lines on the wet pavement. He slammed his right foot to the brake, causing the wheels to lock and hydroplane the pavement. The sports car was out of control. Bright lights headed straight for him. Sal tried to shake off the drunken fog and adjust the Corvette's direction. The approaching truck swerved off the road, screeching, sliding, and finally rolling down the embankment. He wanted to keep going, but something made him break. He slowed, hung a U-turn, then pulled off the pavement and hoisted himself out. Standing, he surveyed the scene. The pickup had landed upright, its hood wrapped around a tree in a deadly embrace. Steam hissed from the wrecked pickup truck. One more drink would help clear things up. He grabbed his bottle from the floorboard and downed a slug. A drag off his cigarette followed but came up smokeless. Great, just great. He threw the butt to the ground, cursing his luck. But man, oh man, he hoped that idiot driver wasn't conscious. That's all he needed now, was a witness. He stumbled down towards the wreckage, almost falling twice. A deathly moan pulled him closer. The truck's headlights guided him forward to the crash site. Help me, please. I can't move my legs. Can't feel them. Someone, please help me. Drawn by a sick curiosity, he slowly slithered closer to the hood and peered through the cracked windshield. Blood was everywhere. The man's face cringed in extreme pain. Then he looked closer at the pale grayish face. He knew this guy. The injured man murmured, Sal? Hey, I know you. I saw your picture in the paper. You're that hero fireman. Save anyone today, mister? He chuckled at his cleverness. Hey man, looks like you're the one who needs saving. He leaned back and shook his head. Too bad for you, cause I ain't no hero. He tossed his liquor bottle through the shattered driver's window. Here, schmuck, ease your pain. Pleased with himself, he turned towards his car, but a snarl stopped him cold in his tracks. He faced the rain-drenched woods and studied the edge of the trees until the dark outline of a large canine formed. A wolf? Or a coyote, maybe? Easy, boy. He backed away from the animal in small, deliberate steps. Easy now. The snarling dog limped slowly out of the shadows. Its white fur was covered in red blood. It must have been thrown from the truck. Dumb mutt. He started up the slippery embankment, going to all fours twice before the crushing weight of the mongrel knocked him to the ground. He scrambled to his feet and up to the road with a new, sobered energy. The dog angrily ripped at his pants. Struggling with all his might, he pulled free and kicked the dog in the head. It yelped, and he took the opportunity to run for his car. Then he yanked his twenty-two from under the seat and squeezed off two rounds at his attacker. At the second shot, the dog howled and ran back towards the woods. He fired once more into the darkness before jumping into his sports car and speeding away. Music pounded from the twin 12-inch speakers off all four walls of his bedroom, reverberating throughout the house and beyond. Matt was equipped with a tennis racket and sunglasses as he pranced upon his imaginary stage. His dad's seven-iron golf club, propped between the frame and mattress of his bed, served as the microphone needed for the song's appropriate lyrics. Grab a stick, oh, your mama's 
Lock yourself up inside your room Turn your steering away up loud Shake your hips and wave to the crowd Someone's knocking outside your door You turn it up just a little more Got the key to your life.